Hello, and welcome to the second day of the U.S.-China Forum addressing inequality and promising social welfare. My name is Waldo E. Johnson, Jr., and I'm an associate professor and deputy dean for curriculum at the Crown Family School of Social Work, Policy, and Practice. Before we begin, I'd like to share a few housekeeping items with you. As a reminder, the university has a mask mandate, which applies to everyone regardless of vaccination status. To ensure everyone's safety, please ensure that your mask, that you're wearing your mask in, at all times while in the building. Restrooms are located in the hallway behind you, and there is a gender-neutral restroom on the fourth floor. Now I would like to begin by introducing Vice President Juan de Pablo. Juan de Pablo is the Vice President for National Laboratories, Science Strategy, Innovation, and Global Initiatives here at the University of Chicago. He is also the Liu Family Professor at the Pritzker School of Molecular Engineering and a senior scientist at Argonne National Laboratory. In addition to his prominence as a materials scientist, Vice President de Pablo oversees the university's two U.S. Department of Energy National Laboratories and the university's expansive global portfolio. Please join me in welcoming Vice President Juan de Pablo. Good evening. On behalf of the University of Chicago, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the second day of the U.S.-China Forum on addressing inequality and promoting social welfare. Yesterday evening, we heard an important discussion on governor, governance and social welfare in the US and China with a particular focus on the shifting relationship between state and non-state actors. Today, we will engage in two panel discussions, the first one on health, mental health and disability and the structures around them and then another one on issues facing uh, children, youth, and the elderly today in both countries. Before we begin, I would like to take a moment to reflect on the partnerships and relationships that make exchanges such as this one really uh, possible. First of all, it's clear that at the University of Chicago, faculty and researchers and students sometimes drive the institution's agenda. They are experts in their topic or fields and the regions in which they uh, work, and they collaborate with their colleagues around the world in service of the advancements of, uh, of knowledge and impact in their fields. But at the same time, it is the university's responsibility as an institution to develop the infrastructure and the solutions that are necessary to amplify all of this important work. By identifying key partners and areas of shared strength and opportunity across campus, we're able to discern the places where a formal institutional partnership would smooth the way for more productive collaborations and enable our faculty to do what they really, really are good at doing. Our global centers in Beijing, Delhi, Hong Kong, London, and Paris help us build relationships and trust, which is very important in this context, with local leadership, with government, community institutions, all of these in regions where our faculty are heavily engaged. Now, beyond this physical proximity and formalized agreements, of course, strong partnerships with our peers help the university establish a network, a presence that facilitates engagement beyond what a physical center, physical presence, can actually provide. For example, throughout the uh, pandemic and the disruption of travel, our faculty who do international work have shown remarkable creativity and ingenuity, really, 
in working with their local partners to pursue their ongoing research and move into uh, new and uh, timely areas of, uh, of research. This could not happen, of course, without the firm bonds of respect and trust and the shared goals that develop between individuals and institutions over the course of long uh, preserved mutual partnerships. Now, these week's events are really a demonstration of that principle with our faculty and their colleagues in the US and China coming together to share their diverse perspectives on complex social issues for the broader public, as well as discussing the work that they have done to address all of these uh, challenges. Now, by facilitating sustained and complex cross-cultural and interdisciplinary dialogue, we help both the university community and those with whom they engage to develop more nuanced and open-minded approaches to both their academic fields and their own communities. Let me conclude by uh, really thanking, extending my gratitude to the China-US Exchange Foundation for their support of this event and the collaboration on this forum. I want to thank our speakers, Professor Rob Chaskin and his team, and of course the Crown Family School for the planning and content of this, uh, of this event, as well as UChicago Global, all of them, and other numerous partners and contributors who helped to make this event possible. I would also like to thank all of you for being here. I know that there's multiple competing events tonight, but thank you so much for uh, being here and logging into this uh, event. And I hope that you will join us tomorrow for the third piece of this uh, US-China forum and the conclusion of this year's event. Thank you very much. <laughs>